Okay, thank you. We'll call the meeting to order. This is uh, <clears throat> Tuesday, November 21, and uh, we have a number of public hearings. So our first one is the public hearing for Graves, 123 Random Farms Drive. This is an application for a site development plan approval to replace and extend a deck and the clearing grading limit lines and the removal of the basketball court, which has been removed. Um, is there a motion to open the public hearing? Motion. Second? Second. All, All in favor? Aye. 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 That'd be me. That's absolutely. Good evening. Um, as a result of a very interesting meeting uh, a week or so after the uh, last meeting, we met with an entire staff yep. and went through the pros and cons of what we come up with. And it was decided to propose that we move the grading and limit line from uh, from where it was, 70 feet, to here. Right. So it had been coterminous with the 70-foot uh, setback line, yeah. too, right? Yeah. Now, what that does is that uh, the that if that is okay with you, then the only thing we need to do now is resolve some of the issues that Cioli uh, Bob wants to talk about, and also then apply for a variance for the which is a very minor variance. I've, I think I've calculated about 60 to 66 square feet. No big deal. Uh, so, um, with that said, uh, I'm going to throw the meeting open to you guys and if you go along some of our people in case you have questions. Okay. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. <coughs> uh, Sabrina, do you have any... Um, uh, so there are no changes at this point. We still have <clears throat> the proposal for uh, you know, repairing and, and completing the deck. Yes. The basketball court has been pulled up. It's gone. Yes. Um, I, I think Bob had some comments and questions on that. And uh, then the, the application at this point is to, is to uh, change the clearing grading limit lines. Yes. But we also have this other issue of what to do about the, uh, the conservation development 70 foot buffer uh, line. So yes. we'll talk about that as well. Okay. Great. Okay. Sabrina, did you have comments? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, I did have comments. Um, you know, again, the project complies with the R1A setback requirements um, as far as the location of the, the house. Um, the conservation subdivision in 1984, the lot contained a 70 foot conservation buffer extending from one to the Todd Hill Road. That buffer is no longer there. The applicant is, is proposing, um, is not addressing that buffer. He is proposing a thoroughly grading limit line, as you can see on the attached plan that's on the screen with that dotted line. Um, which is which then the the seventy foot buffer um, is no longer a, you know on this plan. So one of your decisions is how are we going to deal with that? Are you um, do you agree with the new amended clearing and grading limit line? Um, you know I had made a suggestion that it be extended to the edge of the property. I don't know why it, 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 it's shown on this plan, but it's, it's noted to extend it so that it goes to the edge of the property. Um, and there's a, a <coughs> the zoning information table should include the second column label existing so that the actual setback information for the subject lot can be there. Um, it's located on the plan, but the setback lines are shown on the survey. So the applicant should show all setbacks on one plan at a minimum or both plans if desired. Um, and there's only information be able to be placed on the plan for the setback. So all of these are based. So that when you look at it, you can depict what the table is telling you. Sabrina, I had a question about the um, zoning setbacks. It, it appears from at least one of the sketches that um, the proposed deck and where the landing is with the deck, that that really would be within the 60-foot uh, side yard or front yard setbacks. So I think that's what they would need a variance for yes. at some point. So they're, they're really not complying with the zoning uh, oh. setbacks. 
Correct. Correct. That, that, that landing needs to be to the very end. Well, I'll do that at the deck, too. too. Yeah, yeah, the corner yeah. of the deck as well. Yes. Um, a note about the wetland buffer line. Um, the clearing grading limit line follows that wetland buffer line. Um, you know, in the past, the funding board has requested a physical demarcation um, to be placed along the wetland buffer line, and for that matter, along the clearing grading line. In this case, it may be something you want to consider because that area is also an area where um, there should be restoration or there's been talk of restoration or limitation. Um, Coverage calculations, um, this lot initially predated coverage requirements, um, but the new development on the site reenacts the coverage requirements for the entire site. There seems to be a stone wall on the property that wasn't included in the coverage calculations. Um, I believe about moving that, um, and, it has to, and it may or may not impact the development coverage. So we need to understand that by having it included in the coverage analysis. Um, and I think uh, the table labeled existing open space calculation should be changed to be consistent with the development coverage worksheet and needs to be corrected. So those are all of my comments. I know that this is a public hearing and there's actually a resolution that we had prepared for the board to consider. I think it's, um, it, it is really out of the form for us to attach a map, such as the one that is on the screen prepared by the town engineer, to a resolution. I would suggest that we table a resolution until your next meeting um, to give the applicant an opportunity to make the changes as suggested. Okay. And that's all I have today. Okay. Bob, you had some comments? Uh, yeah, that's just a good evening, Chairman and members of the board. Uh, as you can see this red line mark, I just tried to clarify a lot of the graphics, a lot of the mapping, a lot of the drafting, just to make it a little bit more legible, to just keep my own sanity on this project. So uh, one thing I would recommend, I know Serena mentioned it before, that obviously the existing 70-foot buffer area, as it's called on the final map, 22276, just my recommendation, if they're going to be changing the clear any grading, might as well be consistent and make the new clear any grading an amended clear any grading line be called amended clear any grading line slash buffer area because it would make sense to do that if, if, if the planning board is inclined to eliminate such a huge area that used to be the 70 foot buffer area. That's just not a recommendation. Planning board makes the final statement. It will just make everyone's life a lot easier in the future. And secondly, the final map clearly shows the 70 foot buffer. Anytime you make a change on a file map, the only way to modify it, I believe, anyway, I can a council on this, but is to make another map just for this lot, not for the whole subdivision, just for this lot, to show modifications of that 70 foot buffer area. Which, you know, as again, I stated earlier, might be more, make more sense to make it coterminous with wherever the planning board decides that new amended clearance rated in the line shall be. So that's what I tried to get it across on my markup. Uh, and if that's the way the board wants to proceed, it might let the applicant know that, it would be helpful. Um, also, to, I'm just Paraphrasing a lot of my comments on the one big comment, it's all pretty much interconnected. Uh, if the planning board is inclined to allow the amended theory rating slash buffer area to be amended, obviously they would have to need to prepare a declaration, and that declaration would have to have a part and section in there that would indicate the new file map before lot 37. So when we file the map, you file the map first. Then you get the declaration, and then the declaration incorporates the file map number simultaneously. Um, so that would make more sense in my eyes. Uh, last but not least, I would think whatever the planning board decides to do with this clearing rating slash buffer area change, um, it would be very helpful if the planning plan that Dennis looks at and comments on would show the identical items as well in the same format. And then in the same area, so everything's on the same page. And you may.
imagine that before Mr. Mr. Chairman, Chairman, there are four appearances they would need for the southeast, northeast, southeast, northeast of the landing, southeast, north, northeast of the deck, is obviously it encroaches into the front yard setback, which is along Route 133 and on Hill Road. And that uh, ends my comments for tonight, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Thank you, Bob. Uh, Dennis, I think you had some comments. Uh, yeah. um, I'm looking at the screen and you're here. I'm sorry. <laughs> mine are pretty straightforward. I, you know, stopped wrapping my head around the axle between the conservation buffer and the amended clearing and grading one of mine. So part of that was, you know, finding some documentation, which I provided to Mr. Toscano, who provided it as part of his submission. And, you know, we do have proof here that on December 29th of 92, uh, at the time, Inspector Nowicki went out and documented three white pines that were damaged, storm, hazardous condition, and that they could be removed. So, um, all, all these years later, um, you know, I have no objection to the amended line because I guess, you know, there is documentation that, you know, mature trees that are not going to be replicated in our lifetime were taken down naturally um, and then, you know, obviously became lawn. And I know that's been discussed at length for a number of meetings. Um, the only thing that I wanted to sort of help to further support this um, sort of dendrological relocation program that's been, you know, put forth as far as a lot of trees that have been planted, but, you know, more so along uh, the edge of the property, kind of following the amended clearing and grading limit line, that there should be more detail on that tree table that was uh, provided with the submission. Um, you know, I, and there's members on the team that probably can identify, you know, what, what, what the trees, you know, were in terms of genus and species, just to, you know, get that, uh, get that, get that comparison um, compared to what was. Uh, as far as the, uh, the planting plan, uh, that focus was in the, uh, the wetlands buffer, which is Sabrina mentioned, you know, is at that point uh, coterminous with the amended clearing and grading limit line. Uh, I have no problem with what was selected. Uh, the numbers, the species, I, I think that's all good. And, you know, there is a, uh, that pond that, you know, uh, is located, you know, further down the slope, and I believe that conveyance, uh, even though it sort of disappears before it daylights again, that's where, you know, all that flow goes, so I think that those are, it's a good idea to, to, to uplift that area. I just had, you know, specific comments with respect to specifications for plants. You guys know I am uh, my males and females for my dioecious shrub species, so that just needs to be, you know, documented and shown so that, uh, the certain shrubs will actually fruit, so you need to just show that breakdown. It's not a, not, not a big deal. Um, I would suggest, since these are all new plantings, um, we should come up with some type of herbivory protection for the area, so you want to include those uh, on the plan. Uh, but ultimately, you know, these comments, um, if they needed to be, you know, conditions of approval and resolution, if the board wishes, I, I have no objection to them. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, I had some thoughts on this. Uh, you know, one of the issues we have to tackle <clears throat> as a board is this uh, buffer area. And, uh, you know, when this uh, conservation development was proposed back probably in the mid to late 80s, um, it, was, uh, um, it was very significant. It was a very large development. And it seems to me, uh, my guess is that the conservation buffer was set up to protect the balance of the 133 view shed and Hog Hill from this new development. Looking at it now, you have a fence around this property, you have fences around many of the properties. It's, it's a mature uh, area. <clears throat> it seems to me, and, and people have you know, blown right through these, uh, these buffer lines and, and made lawns and uh, cleared lawns and maintained them as lawns, which, you know, technically is a violation, but at the same token, I'm not so sure what the point of the buffer is at this point. However, it seems to me that we have to have some sort of justification to simply eliminate a buffer line that's been here since the, uh, this conservation development was uh, approved. 
and and you know we work hard uh, often when we do things that we want to make sure we're not setting a precedent. We want to make sure we're distinguishing the property, the reasoning for doing whatever we're doing. Uh, this is when I will call on Dick because he's very big on making sure that we we do that. So I, I'm not quite sure that uh, just willy nilly we just say, well, we don't we don't need it anymore. Although I, deep down I think we probably don't need it. It's a mature development. It's part of the fabric now of our of our community. Uh, it's not something that we are hiding, and there are fences along 133, there are fences along Hog Hill, uh, there's mature vegetation that, uh, that covers the area. It, it just, it blends, it's now blended. So I can't understand, uh, other than for that reason, I can't really figure out, and we had a conversation on this earlier, our guess was that the 75, 70-foot uh, buffer was really uh, something to um, uh, add uh, a view shed uh, buffer. Um, and um, uh, I don't think it's that necessary. I don't think it's necessary at all at this point. So I wouldn't, I don't have a problem making the clearing ready limit line and the buffer line coterminous. But I don't think we've ever just dismissed a buffer line and said, well, I don't know if we could just make it go away. Uh, John, can we do that without, uh, I, I don't, I mean, that was something that's approved. It's, it's part of this, uh, uh, this subdivision. I, I don't know how we do that if, if we want to do that, by the way. Yeah. If you want to do it, you have the authority to do it. You can amend, you know, the subdivision. You can amend the site plan approval. You have that authority. Do we, do, well, um, do we I change it for uh, not just this property, but the entire uh, subdivision? Uh, that's up to you. I don't think that's before you now. Right. I understand. Uh, there's no but... application for that. Um, right. But, you know, I, I do agree with, you know, the representation before that the map would have to be changed. Yes. So the filed map would have to be changed to reflect it. But yes, you have that authority to do okay. it. Okay. I mean, I, I think the applicant hasn't really spoken about, uh, spoken to that issue of the 70 foot buffer. And I think uh, Sabrina has. And I think we really have to address that uh, one way or the other. So if we, we have the ability to do that in our discretion, that makes sense to me. But whatever that mechanism is, I think we should follow it. And I agree. I don't think we should be doing it willy nilly for the entire uh, subdivision. At this point, we don't have information. So we just have this one lot. But if that's something we can do, if if and if board members are comfortable with that, um, uh, I certainly are they uh, requesting it. Uh, it's not even mentioned really. They're, they're, they're just changing the clearing grading limit line. So I think implicitly, uh, yes, it's we, it's we a are, requirement yes, to change the buffer. You. Okay, you are. Okay, good. Okay. Well, I I have a thought. Yep. Um, you know yeah. that that um, the. Applicant has spent a lot of money to repair what Mother Nature did in the way of destruction along you know, the sides of the property. And I think that's a unique uh, opportunity. You know that. Uh, so sorry. Yeah. So I think that the. If the amount, amount of money is significant, I mean, we, we could, could probably ask them and say, what, did, what, did you, what was the repair cost, you know, for, um, you know, the way this whole thing was set up. I don't think many people would have done that. And so I think it's unique. And therefore, I don't mind that there's a, a um, small area that is in the buffer zone. Um, we can just make, you know, make the grading and limit line, or, or make the the line for the, you know, for the vegetation that was supposed to be put in and got blown away, trees and all. Uh, I think that sort of washes itself out rather well, and so that would be unique, which might help, um, you know, others that look at it to say, okay, it's it's not going to happen everywhere. Okay. Respond. Sure, sure. I think at one of our presentations early on, Mr. Graves commented that he had spent over two hundred thousand dollars in uh, in reclaiming that property just to get that number yes. out there, which is a substantial amount of money. Yeah. Um, 
But I think those areas that were restored were areas that had been wooded before. So, yeah. I'm, you know, uh, the buffer areas and, and the clearing grading limit lines are, are just a little bit different in that it's now lawn. Maybe it was lawn even in 1992. Who knows uh, when they did that. So um, I agree with Dick. It's, it, that could certainly be something that we could use to, to uh, distinguish this uh, situation from others. So I, we certainly did appreciate it. I know others have commented that uh, when Mr. Graves gave us that information, um, Eldad's not here. I know he commented last time. He was favorably um, uh, impressed with that, of course. As part of our earlier presentation, we've submitted, or the town gave me three photographs, aerial photographs, mm -hmm. before, during, and after. And if I can go, the, the area that was destroyed by the storm was roughly this whole area. If you look at the area of photograph, this was all a gray area. Not a tree was standing. So that's the area that he replenished from virtually his entire site. What did he do? Well, that's in, the, that's in your file. You, yep. you have that. What, what's the current uh, condition of that now? Is, is it it's all lawn. It's lawn. Beautiful, it's lawn. beautiful lawn and trees and bushes. It's beautiful. Okay. So it was... It was a, a natural state because it was a, there was a buffer and clearing and clearing and grading limit line in place. The storm happened, yes. and there was not a restoration activity, but there was the activity of turning it into lawn yes. and yes, and That's creating right. essentially a a buffer zone of some planted trees along the edge. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Thank you. Which is, I think, on the landscape drawing, which yeah. shows before, right. during, and after trees. Okay. Um, well, well, as long as you're here, what are you planning to put underneath the deck? Is it be gravel? Are you gravel? Going, okay. Yeah. And, and you're not going to uh, wall it in or no. anything like this? It's going to be open? No. Okay. And my understanding is the concrete landings are already in there. That was part of the, before the yes. stop work order? Yes. Okay. Okay. And uh, did you give any thought uh, last time around? We asked if, if there might be some ser sort of consideration to um, changing the, the uh, stairs so that it came off the side, not, uh, not what is it? We, south I, I, I had looked, mm. the stairs were there when I came, came into the project. Um, okay. We looked at it, and it really doesn't work. It really doesn't work. And uh, as it stands right now, um, the, the the buffer zone is no longer part of the the consideration because it's not on the on the uh, the deck. The only thing we have to deal with is the zoning of approximately sixty six square feet of the corners. There's a little smidge here and a little smidge there and the part of the part of the stairs. And if you add all that square foot, the jump comes to about 66 square feet. Right. That's going to be the nature of the variance that we're going to ask for. Uh, and that's um, <coughs> that's the zoning setback. Thing. Yes. Yes. Again, it has nothing feet. to do with the no. the buffer, no. the 70 foot uh, environmental buffer that was set when this application. Now, the was way first I understand it, the buffer is no longer there. Or at least, if you approve, it's not there. Right. Yeah, it is still there. It's it is there. still there. It's, it's, it's a violation. I'm <laughs> clear about that. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> if you approve, it will right. disappear. Uh, uh, along with a clearing rate. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's probably true. <laughs> okay. So, which which I am a little bit concerned about. Um, not necessarily that uh, it wouldn't be justified in that you know events I sort of catch up yeah. and. Maybe it's become now irrelevant because the context has changed. Uh, but there's a larger question. I I wonder if maybe it's not for you to worry about, but at some point it might be the planning board's concern that the restrictions that we would be lifting from this particular piece of property are restrictions that other landowners in the development are subject to. I understand that. And may actually be honoring. Yes. And so at some point, it, it just seems to me that somehow unfair. I understand those applications aren't in front of us right now. But I guess, I, and this is not for to take up your time in all of this, uh, but at some point, would it make any sense 
would it be possible for the planning board to resurrect the original subdivision application and amend the buffer zone for the entire subdivision on its own without having an applicant come before it to to amend and change the buffer zones on all the properties that had currently have it does that make sense it, it does it it might make sense it might make sense to look at it but I don't know if it would make sense to do, uh, you know, and again, uh, you know, and that's, we're sort of getting ahead of ourselves. You'd have to see what the facts and circumstances are, but, it, you know. <coughs> well, I don't, I'm not sure I, I meant to get ahead of ourselves here. Well, I'm saying is like, you, you don't know, like the, the facts and circumstances of this application are known to you. What's there, why it's there, why it's happened, what, what they did. That may or may not be the case with the other houses in the subdivision, right? But I thought that the and I I don't I don't have your information and, and your um, perception of this because I'm not really that familiar with the surrounding area mm -hmm. and the conservation area. But I, unless I'm mistaken, I thought your comment was that that context, the larger context, had changed. Yes. Not that anything's been done on this property necessarily. I mean both. that's changed too. It's both. I think both. Uh, uh, again, I was focusing really on this property, but I also noted that in in addition. Everything has matured here, and it seems to me that the initial need, when you cleared this land back in 1989, and it was an old farm, and it was cleared, and then you put in, how many homes were in here? I don't know. A lot. A lot. Um, <laughs> you know, it, it, that, that was a very big, big thing. That was kind of uh, uh, dramatic. Right. And so, therefore, the planning board, I think, reacted appropriately to set up these kinds of uh, uh, buffers mm -hmm. for views. This property itself, specifically, uh, to me, doesn't shed any kind of, uh, it's almost impossible to look inside, inside of the property from Hog Hill from 133. Okay. Uh, it, it faces this way in front, so it has a front yard, and, and that's what you see. So uh, the need for it uh, seems to have been uh, diminished, if not you know, eliminated with time and maturity and, and just years. Fair enough. So the next question would be, um, I guess it's for a matter of, of convenience or to just recognize that the uh, area uh, within the uh, clearing and grading limit line uh, has now been turned over to lawn as a result of a landscape improvement that was done because of a, um, a, a disaster that happened on the property. In addition um, to the replanting, in addition to what we're proposing to be brought onto the property as of now. So I guess the question the I'm asking, planting. these are two, to, to me, I, I don't, I think that the conservation, moving the conservation line and maybe abandoning it all together is appropriate on this property. But I don't, I, I, I guess it just sounds like it's a matter of convenience to now say that the clearing and grading limit line should be congruent or, or should be the same as the buffer line. and. I think these are two completely different uh, issues and two completely uh, different, I think, um, cr criteria and reasons for these things to exist. One is for one purpose, one is for another purpose. So I would separate the two and talk about the clearing and grading limit line uh, separate from the uh, buffer, the conservation buffer, okay. and have a conversation about whether we think that's uh, uh, what the right location of that line would be. I, I, however you decide to yeah. navigate this is fine with us. No, I think that makes good sense to talk because there are two two separate standards of uh, criteria that are, that are that apply. Yeah, and so I, now I would ask, well, what is the justification for moving the clear integrating limit line so far uh, from its original location? What's, what's the reason to do this? Why it's should very, we do it? It's a very good question. And in this meeting, uh, I must have missed it because I think it was Sabrina who proposed it, and uh, and I think she's there. And maybe if she's still there, I'd like to. I'm have here. Her. I did not propose the primary grading limit line the way you have drawn it. So so, so, so please, please don't put words in my mouth, Wally. Okay. Somebody proposed Somebody it. Did. It wasn't anybody in, in our in our team who came up with the idea because it was a completely novel idea to all of us. So well, well, where it came from, I think, is less important than yeah. where we go from here. Great, great. Um, and so I, I guess you know we could take the lead, and give you some suggestions about what we think, or you can start by telling us why you think it should be here or where you would like to put it. 
You have any ideas? Someone at the meeting totally suggested it. Yeah. That's why we had the meeting. Well, that's, uh, with all due respect, um, when, when the applicant met with staff and we discussed the clearing and grading limit line, we asked them to quantify the difference between the original clearing and grading limit line and what they wanted to propose. And at that meeting, they, they talked about the plantings that had already been put in, and the comment was made, draw the line where you want it and make the justification for having it there. Well, in that light, I think then it probably was um, uh, Joe Lake who sort of made, uh, came up with that line. And uh, yeah, I think that's irrelevant <laughs> at this point who came up with it. The matter is, is this the line that you would like the planning board to consider? Yes. And if so, what is your justification as um, an interpreter? It's a pretty dramatic change. Yes. As, you know, you I, I don't have the answer to that because okay. uh, I, there are three consultants that we hired to answer these questions. Uh, I'm just the master of ceremonies here. <laughs> well, uh, it Can seems to me. Can you highlight the original line for the, on the screen as well? It's, it's, it seems to me that the request is uh, to change is because that's that's what's happened. So uh, that's long at this point, but that usually is not uh, by itself persuasive. <laughs> oh, that's the. Uh... See, the yellow line is the old. This, yeah. this angle, this dotted. Yeah, it's on the drawing. Yep. So it's very, this dotted one is, yeah. is, is it. So. Yeah, just, just, just for clarification, what I showed, showed in blue, blue yeah. uh, to survey this, this point, that was to determine by the survey or somebody, because it was on the survey. Um, we did not tell them to put it there. That's what they gave to us. That's what we commented on. Okay. So that's, it is what it is, and that's where they put it. The yellow is what the old one was when the theory and green was so terminus with it, the buffer stuff. I just wanted to show them that. I, that's all. I think they're just following the lawn. The lawn must be to that blue, lo blue line, right? Would that yes. be right? Yeah, I think yeah, that's, that's what the what survey indicates. Yeah, so that's yeah the, the best thing I can come up with is that all of the, the vegetation, which is quite thick, exists. Outside yeah. of it, yeah. yeah, yeah. So that seemed like a natural place to place to place it. Well, it's up to I where the lawn edges. I'm yeah. assuming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's correct. <clears throat> so, uh, personally, I don't have a uh, a problem with it specifically with this this application. It's more of a theoretical situation where, again, we have to make it. You know, we have to somehow distinguish why we're doing something like this. Uh, to Tom's point and to Dick's point, and, and that is we have other people who just come in and just say, I want it. Yep. You know, and, and basically that's almost what you're saying on the clearing grading limit line aspect of it. You know, we want it because it's there. And it makes sense because we have a lawn. And uh, probably makes sense. Mm -hmm. But we really need to uh, and I'm really at, at a loss for making that those distinctions for, frankly. How long has the lawn been there? Good ten years. 10, 15 years. Well, if the uh, loss was in 92, it's when, even longer. When was uh, um, the storm, the big storm? Um, I, thought, I thought Sandy. Sandy. Was, Sandy. That was, oh, Sandy? That was 12. Okay, so since yeah, shortly thereafter. Okay. Yeah. So 11. It, this was, um, yeah, before then. And um, it was one of my prior memos. It showed lawn, and then it became magic pavement, and now it's back to magic lawn. So. It's gone through a lot of transformations, uh, and you know, and uh, at this point, I, I'm even like confused, and I'm glad that you helped to elaborate, like that the, the distinction. Like I agree, maybe a conservation buffer doesn't make sense, but if you do move that line, then yeah, you could put a pool in there. And that's probably not. Well, one of the things that has happened on this application which I think we should take note of, uh, is that the, the entire sports court has been pulled up. And that was a real problem. That was also a violation of uh, clearing grading limit, buffer, uh, probably wetlands as well. So that's been done. And, and, and you know, um, are we, Dennis, are you satisfied with the work that's been done and the restoration for whatever's out there right now uh, after the, the court's been pulled up? I assume it's just been restored to lawn and maybe a couple plantings. Uh, yeah, it's just been seeded to, to stabilize it. Obviously, 
this would be the next right next step. Would have to be. So I mean, I think that's something that has happened here that we can that they gave up. They gave up that violation yeah, in exchange they, for this what, violation. What did they give up? Yeah, well, I, I, exactly. It was a violation. Yeah, exactly. It's a rental. Yeah, yeah. but I mean, so I, I, it's the, I don't think, I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah, no, I, I, I understand. I, I, I don't find uh, any credit um, due. Sorry about that. That's okay. I, I have trouble sort of um, giving credit to that improvement when that improvement was actually required anyway. Yeah. It was a violation that needed to be, needed to be dealt with. No, that's not and was dealt with. That's not an improvement. That was, that was something that needed to be done because right. it was a violation. Clear so the, the original court was the improvement that needed to be fixed. Yes. It was. Uh, so, I mean, I, 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 I understand and am happy to give credit to the amount of landscaping that was done and to try and restore the property. Um, but the particular things that were uh, violations, it's hard to say, gee, you know, we're going to give you this because you, you know, did that. I don't see you need, we need So it. I don't, uh, I, wouldn't I don't ask for credit. On yeah, I don't, right. I don't follow that argument. No. Mm -hmm. um, what, what concerns me about, there are a couple things that concern me about this dramatic, it's actually a very, very dramatic move of the uh, clearing and grading limit line. If you add it all up, I don't know how many square feet it might add up to. But if you add it all up, it's actually quite a bit. Mm -hmm. And there are two things that I think we ought to be aware of. One of the one of the reasons for a clearing and grading limit line was not for the aesthetics of the property, the aesthetics of the town, but real ecological reasons for habitat, for example. And the notion that uh, we are slowly eating away at the natural forest we live in is something that I think we ought to be concerned about. I know the Conservation Board's concerned about it. I believe the ERB is concerned about it. And I think this Planning Board needs to be concerned about it. I know I am, and I think the Planning Board's concerned about it also. If you look at the, um, if, if you look at a, a typical subdivision plan with everything cleared to within 10 feet of the property line on both sides, you really don't get much left. One of the reasons for clearing graded limit lines were that the back of the properties, you would end up with enough of a buffer area so that you could have some natural forest and have habitat. And that's the character of the town visually, but it's also the character of the town in terms of, you know, the life of the forest and all that stuff that, that I think that we like. That's that's uh, one uh, concern that I think well, we really I think, ought to be looking at. Well, I, the way I understood it, in addition to what you're, you're saying, obviously, is that the whole idea was if we had... Uh, Whole property that all of the all of the, the entire site is surrounded by residences, and the way it worked out that as these properties were developed, these properties became backyards to these properties across the street. So you had a street with a backyard on one side and a front yard on the, on the other side. So as a as a remedy to that, the buffer of seven feet somehow or other, in addition to what you're talking about, was probably determined to be a good number. Disallow any development and let it be as natural as possible for as long as possible. So, the other thing that I, I would be concerned about is again setting the precedent of, well, gee, you know, it's there, so we ought to go ahead and just, uh, you know, approve it. And there's a, these little things actually oh, seem to yeah. like they're little things, mm -hmm. but they add up. Yeah, they do. I agree. And the more we give away, I think on give away, the more we, the more these little things get sort of happen in town, here, there, and in that you end up almost everywhere over time. One day you wake up and you go, what happened to my town? We pay attention to the really big things, and the little things sort of get sort of passed over. I agree. And they actually end up having, have the potential to end up having a much greater impact. So it's the actual sort of consequences to this particular property that I'm concerned about, but I'm also concerned about the precedents it sets. And we can go ahead and make up special conditions why we're approving it for this particular site, but I haven't heard them yet. And I have trouble, I have trouble theorizing what they might be. I just can't figure out why we would do it here. 
Now, I don't know where the line should go, mm -hmm. but I think that to say, well, we're going to just put it all the way, you know, down to near where the property line is a matter of convenience because that's where the lawn is now. And well, that, that raises the question. If, if you're not sure where the line should be, and certainly the staff members aren't, aren't advocating anything, and we're not advocating something, so together we ought to be able to get together and decide on a line. That'll meet every, make everybody right. happy. So the implication of that line would then be that there would be a restoration if we're going to pull the line towards the house. And so that's the conversation, really, that we need to have, is what kind of conservation are you willing to do in addition to where you are already? You would probably be ripping out lawn in certain places and bringing in trees and habitat. So that's, that's what the great changing it and bringing it closer to what, you know, if we, are, if we have to figure out a line between the green and the blue, whatever shape it is, right, and whatever we all agree with, the point is that's, that's what's required. I'm not sure that is, because there's another tactic, another strategy, which is just to put some monuments in the ground, don't, lo don't mow past this point. And just let, let nature take its course, as it will. Yes. With the stipulate, I mean, maybe it ends up being meadow um, sure. for, for a period of time, which is not a bad idea. Uh, with, the, with the stipulation that the property owner has the right to go in and clear invasives for, you know, his own, for, you know, his own benefit. But that's another way to go. I agree, but just uh, let me... Uh, may, I, I may I make a comment? comment? I don't know if you can hear Paul Kennedy. Kennedy. Yes, hi, Paul. Yeah, yeah I, one thing, I, I, you, you could keep that line, but you just don't call it a clearing line. I mean, I think it's not inappropriate to keep the line as, uh, you know, you can't grade past this line. So because if you, if you go with the, the notion that the line should be down where the blue is, then somebody might come in at a later time uh, or, or do feel they can do great regrading in the backyard. This, if you kept that line, but just call it a, uh, a grading limit line, and amend the site for the uh, the clearing based on what's really out there, you you you'd at least get a little more protection in in what you you've been talking about as far as protecting uh, the future of that property. So you could keep that yellow line, but it's no longer a clearing line because it's it's been cleared. The, the, the damage, damage has been, been done, done, but, but, but you, you could, could maintain, maintain a grading on the line, at least, so there is a future regrading. So that's, that's a possibility. Well, um, I understand the, the, what you're saying, I think, but it doesn't get to uh, the point I was trying to make, which was that um, you were, what I think we ought to be looking at is um, the either... Um, the either active restoration of the property to you know the, to forest uh, or just the benign restoration just let it happen by itself the point is is to get is to get the forest back rather than to worry about grading yes. and if you if you if you don't put the the provisions that um, you cannot go in there and clear the property. You don't get the, the benefits that I think that the, the, the chief benefits that I think the clearing and grading limit line are, are, are meant to deliver. At the risk of complicating it, you, you said it before, that if nature takes its course, if na na what nature did is it took those trees down. It, nature said, we don't want trees there anymore. I don't think nature has a point of view about that. <laughs> you get my point. I'd love to have nature here testify to that. I don't think that's going right, to happen. Let me be nature. <laughs> uh, the point is that in the natural evolution of that site, a storm struck, took the trees down, because they weren't very good trees to begin with, as we all have, have noted. And if we let it sit the way it was, we didn't have to do anything because we were letting nature take its course. It could have been just sitting there just the way it is now, except for the fact that the, the owner put some grass seed down. Well, but that's not, I mean, actually, that's not factually true. Mm -hmm. No, it, it's not, because the natural life of a forest is for these things to happen. 
And trees, mm-hmm. yeah, trees that fall down become actually a very, very rich habitat environment. And that actually it becomes the kind of environment where forests will regrow. And that's just the natural cycle of things. Yes, the natural cycle you And this is not that? the, na- turning it to lawn is not the natural cycle well, of things. All right, I'll, I'll grant you that. But okay. you, if the trees fell down, then the owner would have been faced with the fact that on two thirds of his property would have been fallen trees. No, it would you could do nothing. Yeah, that's but, totally. but that's not the, yeah, that's, that's not the point. I think one of the things that we've, we've asked for, um, I, I heard from Bob and also Sabrina, do we have, to maybe we move this along further, um, do we have uh, any quantification of terms of, maybe Paul, you have this information, what the difference is, the delta is in terms of square footage uh, between uh, the yellow and the blue? The wicked, the, 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 and then we can actually maybe reach a, some sort of a understanding as to maybe we want to see off the top of my head, I a certain percentage of it to be uh, reforested, yeah. Yeah. nature forested or planted forested, or and then some also meadow where once a year, twice a year, the applicant can cut it, and then some obviously some lawn as well. And I'll, yeah, and also it could be that one side of, you know, one part of it, like mm-hmm. there's one naturally you can sort of compensate and and bring in natural habitat, right, on this side, on, on the north side of the property. Yeah, the wetland side. Mm-hmm. And if you were to stand up and, and talk about what the landscaping that you have done? Well, yeah, it's not what they're asking. No, because that's all been done outside of... Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's in the wetland book. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which, which is great, which, you know, we support and, and, and is important. And I think Dennis has said that he likes it. That's great. Okay. So we're all for that to the extent that, perhaps to uh, uh, Kanan's point, to the extent that you extend that, that, yeah, extend it, um, and this that side might help you us. Can, and this side, you can let it be the way it is. But I, I like I, I like the idea of at least getting some quantification so we know what we're talking about. Yeah. And I think we've, the staff has asked for that. And then we can sit there and say, okay, we're, we're talking about 2,500 square feet. Yeah. You need to restore 1,400 square feet. Okay. Uh, something like this to line. help. That's and then we can start drawing lines. And, we can do that. And, Believe it or not, actually be done with this application. Yeah, I feel like if you actually follow the, you know, the side of it, that you already have a lot of the planting done. Yeah. All right, so, so my, do I have this straight? What, what we're, where we're at is if we go back and quantify in the square footage that is being dealt with. And yeah, the some, change, the delta between the, delta, the blue and the yellow. Okay, and then make a proposal back in terms of, somehow, between the three of us, replanting some more plants and so on to the satisfaction of us and then submitting it to you and see where we stand. Right. Well, it's not just the plants. I mean, to Tom's point, I think we would want to see, and maybe it's a blend, yeah. but, you know, let nature take its course for a certain portion of it, whatever that means, and you guys propose what you think that means, and then whatever plantings you want to do, where, again, once the plantings are done, it's an area that, Maybe once a year you go and clear vines and invasives, and that's it. Other than that, it's 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 left. Yeah, I don't I don't want I don't want to make this onerous in terms of cost. The the the, the property owner has already made a very big investment in landscape, and that's why I wonder if you know Bob's approach, where you know you don't have to go in and landscape it uh, to to restore it. If you you may want to put a few trees in there, which is fine, but just let nature take its course and the um, and the activity that the property owner would then take would be once or twice a year going in and, and doing some maintenance. And that no. without really making oh, it okay. onerous in terms of cost. Okay. So, can, uh, so if, if I understand you, if, if some, some of this, let's say, were referred to a meadow, the owner might have the ability to go once a year and do a mowing. Yeah. Yes, we've done that many times, once or twice a year, uh, to yeah. just maintain it as a meadow. I find that a very attractive yeah. proposal, if that's uh, one of your thoughts. Yeah. yeah. Good. Do we have enough, well, I, I, have, have we given enough direction or in well, terms of what we're yeah. looking for on that? There's another one of my consultants. So I, I think you're hearing from us that the, the, the buffer itself, the 70-foot buffer, is something that we're not terribly concerned okay. with, but the clearing grading we are. Okay. And, and uh, then, um, <clears throat> were there other issues that you had, Dennis, Bob, or Sabrina, that really, uh, so that we, we make, we're clear of what we really need so we can... Well, there's some paperwork that we have to 
yeah. take care of the yes. applications, which is not. We've got to clear up this. All of those red notations have to be cleared up. Just, uh, just legally, do we, um, do we take the buffer line off the drawing so it no longer is something that people are going to I think we would do, do that, and they would actually have to refile the map. Yes. Yeah, it? take the 70 foot off, right? Yeah. The file map would have the restrictions that you approve on. Great. Thank you. So the next meeting, we're going to propose uh, we remove that buffer, that 70 foot line, no longer exists. We will propose a, a meadow, if you will, like with the terms of forest stations and plantings along that edge, and that's it. Well, you, you're going to propose a um, an amended clearing and grading limit line from what you have here, right. and and then whatever you, you want to describe to us, what you want to put in there, uh, mm -hmm. then we'll you know okay. Dennis and Bob and Sabrina will look at it and we'll consider it. And okay, hopefully go from there. Sabrina, were there any other issues? We started this an hour ago. I've already forgot what we did in the beginning. <laughs> um, I, I think that just the comments in my memo, and I, I believe that Bob has noted them on the plan that he had attached to his review memo. So I think that everything is there for them to uh, review and, and make amendments. To okay. Review. So we meet again in December, December 5. Probably mm -hmm. at the cutoff with the information uh, of the clear grade level. So if you could, twenty seventh is the cutoff for that. Can you get that into us? I mean, just the I, draw I, lines. I, I, none of my people here. I can't answer the question. I have to talk to them. Well, try it. I will try to, and, and because I don't think we're going to have a second meeting in December, which means yeah. that it goes to January. Of course, of course. So. Well, well, so this is a public hearing, Mr. Chairman. Yep. So you can either continue the public hearing or close the public hearing. Well, I think at this point we should really continue it. I don't think we have uh, enough here. So you have to continue it to a date certain. Okay. Thank you. So I guess what we'll try, we'll continue it to December 5. Mm -hmm. If you're unable to make that, then we'll just uh, you know note it and uh, adjourn it and then reschedule for sometime in January. Okay. And if, if I may ask, if you are unable to make the deadline for the December 5th meeting, we'll need an email documenting that you wish to adjourn to a future meeting. Okay. Okay. So don't get too much turkey. <laughs> it works for the holiday. <laughs> Yippee skippy. Yes, exactly. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> Thank you. Am I done? <laughs> Yes, sir. I think so, yes. So is there a motion then to uh, adjourn the public hearing till uh, December 5? Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. Great. We'll see you then. Thank you. Okay. We move now to our next application. This is Rosansky, 10 Cynthia Court. Um, this is an application for a site development plan approval for construction of an in-ground Swimming pool and stabilization of a gravel tra trail, excuse me, extending beyond the clearing grading limit line. Uh, we last heard in October. <coughs> we received, I don't know if the board members saw it, but we received some late information from uh, Jerry. Um, uh, some uh, proposed amendments to the resolution that's before us. <coughs> we don't have any uh, uh, additional information. We looked at it last time around. We saw the maps. I think everyone. Everything was explained to us and we were fine with it. We just needed to go through the, the routine of the public hearing. Uh, so I guess the first thing we have to do is there a motion to open the public hearing? Second? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Are you there, Jerry? I am here. Good evening, Mr. Uh, Chairman and members of the planning board. Um, I'm here um, with um, uh, the project engineer, Alan Phillips, and I believe um, the owner, Greg Rosansky, is also on the, on the call. Um, I would like to share, but the said oh, that you, you cannot share while the other something in the world. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to try to share now. Um, so, uh, I'll start out just doing a quick overview of where we are and um, we'd like to talk about today. Um, did anything come up? Wow, you've taken over the screen. Okay. 
Yep, it's up there. Did the, did did plan come up? Up? Yes, yes, it's there. Okay. So, um, yeah, so, so what this project essentially is about is uh, the owners would like to install a swimming pool in their upper backyard, which is up here, and it's separated from their lower backyard, which is here. You also want to put in a stabilized grass path to connect the two areas. And we've gone through. Um, several meetings with the board, and I think we've, we've arrived at, um, at, at, at a plan that everyone is comfortable with. And then there were just a couple of hiccups. At the, uh, in July, we received a resolution of approval, of conditional uh, approval, and as we started working through those conditions, um, we realized that we had to come back to the board to discuss a couple of things. Number one, uh, previously we talked about trying to install the uh, the stormwater management system, um, which Alan will talk about, um, in the front yard area. But uh, the soil testing in that area did not work out. It was full of uh, a lot of bony fill that the developer had buried in the area. So instead, Alan found an area in the lower front yard. And, and, what, and it works fine. The problem is it's beyond the approved clearing grading limit line um, that was. Um, that, that, that was previously approved for the project, and therefore, so we came back and we're asking the planning board to approve an amendment to the clearing agreement the line to allow us to uh, put the stormwater in the front yard. And the other issue we had was that uh, previously we thought we were over on our development coverage, and as we worked through the plan and looked through the surveys, we realized that the stone wall shown on the surveys. You, know, you see these brown walls, and these are the walls that the builder built during construction, and those are considered existing. But this wall, you can see they used a different symbol. And this wall is in the middle of the woods. It's an old farmer's wall. That would be a pre-existing wall. And that does not count toward uh, development coverage. So we backed that out. We found out we did not need um, the zoning uh, development coverage variance. So really, essentially, what we're talking about now is um, just trying to amend clearing green limit line for the project. So we had previously provided the board a plan. We showed this was, you know, when it was, when it was, I think this was when it was brandy wine, and this is when it was nick. Um, and, uh, and, 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 and the proposed amended plan is in this area. You can see there's an appendage right here, and that's where that stormwater management area is. So when we calculated this, um, we showed that area and we said, well, to put in this whole stormwater management system, um, to put that in, you know, it's going to be about 1,720 square feet to put that stormwater management system in, and that's it. It installed the trench drain across the driveway, trench along the front yard, and then tie it into the, uh, the Caltech system that Alan's proposing. But what we found out was that this area here, in front of this wall, was already in the clearing grading limit line. So that area we didn't have to count. Um, so really the only area that would be new would be this area here that is beyond the clearing grading limit line, and that's for 1,020 square feet. So that's what we're asking the board to approve. Um, and um, I think that we discussed it last month, and I think everyone felt comfortable with the idea. Um, staff has provided a resolution of approval, an amended resolution of, of approval. Um, we have a July resolution, we have a November resolution, and we, we would just like to ask um, two requests. Um, number one, on the sea slope permit, it indicates that the sea slope permit complete all the work three years from the date of the resolution on or about July 20th. We would request, couldn't we make that November? Uh, the latest resolution is November, so could we do that? That just gives the applicant another four months, and that would be our first request um, for the board to consider. And the second request would be, uh, and this is on the back page of the uh, July resolution, it says that, you know, that that the approval shall expire for building permits is not issued within six, within six months of the date of the resolution. And we have found um, recently that six months is just not enough time 
Um, once, once we leave the planning board with that approval, we need to, you know, we need to you know, you know, respond to all of the conditions of approval. We need to develop the construction drawings and specifications. And then we need to go out and bid, and the owner has to hire a contractor. You know, and then we have to get the building department application, and then Alan has to deal with the health department. And what we found is it, 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 it just it, six months is not enough time. We're wondering if that could be like two years instead. Um, we just, I just don't see it happening. The other problem has been contractors have been so busy, pool contractors have been so busy that it's difficult to get them to even bid on the jobs. And then when they do schedule the work, it's always, it's always scheduled in, in advance. So we would ask three things, I guess, this evening for the board to consider approving the amended grading limit line for another 1,020 square feet to allow the stormwater system to be put in the lower front yard to um, modify the resolution condition five that uh, it would be, the steel permit would be for three years from the November uh, 23 resolution as opposed to the July one. And if the uh, the final one we just talked about, if the building permit, uh, if the approval can be extended, you know, the, if we have up to, I don't know, one year, two years, but I, six months, there's just no way I think, I think that it's, 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 it's feasible to do that. We just went through that on another project in town, and our variance actually ran out on us, and we're going back to the ZBA now because of that. And that was my fault. Um, but, uh, so that's where we are with the project. Are we uh, able to do that with a building permit, or is that in, in the code? Um, honestly, I don't know. I know uh, do you, that, Bob, do you know uh, whether that's, well, uh, I, I know we customarily do that. I don't know if that is just a custom or if it's really something that we we are obligated to do. Yeah, that's, that's a good question, Mr. Chairman. Chairman. I don't know. Uh, Some of the regulations uh, actually specify. Right. Uh, the that time most do, and I, I just don't know off the, you know. I, I don't think any, anyone has a problem extending it if, if we can. And if we have the discretion to do it, yeah. it makes good sense, as much as we love to see it. <laughs> I know I've seen it in every resolution. I've never right. seen it in more than six months in all the resolutions that I've seen. Right. It's absolutely we we customarily do, but, you know, <laughs> it's hard to explain what we do sometimes. I feel like we were asked for one of those for the Chappaqua Crossing on one of these kind of Quite resolutions. Right. Just for clarification, this resolution Jerry's showing is the previous resolution, so I guess, guys, this is new resolution has to modify the old resolution, because this is the new resolution. That's the yellow, that's the previous resolution, the one that Jerry's talking about right now. But aren't we obligated, Bob, to respond to all the conditions in both the July and November uh, resolutions? Excuse me? Aren't we obligated? No, you are, but if you don't want to change the old one, you have to change it in the new one. It's got to be put in the new resolution. Oh, it, doesn't go, it didn't show up in the new resolution. That's why, that's why I cited it here. It oh, okay. Well, don't we incorporate the, the earlier resolution by reference and it's, it's built into the new one? So usually there's a line in there that says... And, yeah, it incorporates yeah. it into it. Right. Anyway, in the meantime, any questions uh, on the on the application that's before us? Any issues? No. Any questions from the public on this? And it's Rainer, you and Bob and Dennis are all fine on this, right? At this point, no problems, no issues. Okay. Yes, yeah, no problem. Okay. No problem. Well, <clears throat> is there a motion to close the public hearing? Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Gives us gives us a feeling that we're making progress. <laughs> Can we um, amend the resolution, John, and and say to the extent that we there's something in the code that enables us to extend it to a year, we will. If not, if we're if we're bound by the code for some reason, we say we're bound by the code. Unless contradicted by that, you know, okay. go. And I'll, I'll, I'll yeah. let you know first. Thing. Does anyone have a problem with extending no. for a year? No. no. Jerry, do you want? Uh, well, a year. Do you think a year will work? You want, uh, if we can, if you I want, mean, eighteen months. Year, I mean, eighteen months would be better. And, okay. You know, I mean, Alan has to deal with the health department. I mean, we've got another project in town, and it is really taking him a long time. It's yep. not Alan's fault. You know, they're, they're just busy. Sure. 
Okay, now we understand. Um, so I, I, I think the amended um, uh, resolution would be that we would extend uh, the building permit requirement to 18 months if we can. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the date issue? Yeah, on the November one, yeah, I think, yeah. Are you okay? We're okay with that, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Is there a motion to adopt the resolution with those amendments? Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We go next to our next matter. This is uh, Rizerski and Kumar, 14 and 10 Brookdale Lane, application for a preliminary subdivision plan approval for a lot line adjustment. This is a public hearing, our first time. Is there a motion to open the public hearing? Motion. Second? Second. All in favor? Right. Aye. 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 Uh, you picked up the, the Johnson, right? I did. Okay. Uh, yeah, not on yeah, Okay. Uh, any questions with the... Uh, we don't have any additional information. Uh, we, we looked at it last time uh, informally, and we were, we're now where we hope to have been last time. Um, any questions from board members on this, or uh, any questions or issues uh, from staff? Can I have a donor for the Atkins? Um, yep. Mr. Nishiki, is actually in the room, I believe, and there was an issue about a encroachment of a vinyl fence and a portion of the driveway that has a remedy. And Mr. Zerski has brought pictures with him to present to the board. Okay. How are you doing, board? Eric Rizerski. Um It's a little interesting to see, um, but uh, basically we removed one entire section of fence. Yep. And the driveway, you can see, has a curve to it now to accommodate in. About five, six Belgian blocks were taken off the end. So now everything's so, within the new property line? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So that this tree, you know, is is in this shadow right there. Uh, yeah, yeah. We, we had conditioned it, but it was something that again uh, the parties would have to just rectify amongst yourselves. Exactly. We just wanted to make sure that it was taken care of. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Uh, this is uh, Rohit, the other party. Uh, has this been taken care of recently? Just, just want to understand that. Yes. The last. Yes, time. I was finished today. Yes. Uh, okay. That's, That's great. great. Yeah. And I can send you those pictures as well. Oh, that's amazing. Can I make, can I make more recommendation? I mean, would it be a problem to show the actual new location of these things to the surveyor's point and put it on the file map so we know it's done properly and it's on the right areas of property? Sure, sure. I can have a surveyor correct that. Show it on the file map that would memorialize it. Yep, you got it. Thank, thank you. Great. So we'll just add that as a condition uh, to the resolution. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Okay. Any comments? From, no. Any other comments from the public? If not, is there a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We have a resolution before us. Um, uh, one of the whereas is we, we can take the one out. I guess we're about the vinyl fence now, uh, which is line forty-nine. Well, we, we, that should be changed to showing it on. Um, right. Matt. Perfect. Yep. Um, anyone else? Any other thoughts or changes? No. Nope. Okay. If not, is there a motion to adopt the amended resolution? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Good. And I would like to thank the board and the chairman and town staff. You've been fantastic. We really appreciate all of your efforts. You're welcome. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Good luck. Have a good day, everyone. Yep. Thank you. Same to you. Thank you, everybody, for standing over here and staff. Really appreciate your help again. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. Have a good holiday. We move now to our next item. This is Panetti to Main Street, Kisco Park. This is an application for a site development plan approval. Um, application for a preliminary subdivision approval, stormwater management and erosion, and sedimentation control for construction of a new single-family residence. So we heard this informally uh, at a non-meeting that we had, <laughs> and um, we gave the applicant some uh, some feedback. And um, uh, anyway, uh, we're ready to move this thing forward and, and go from there. Mr. Alfonsetti, Alfonsetti, excuse me.
Um, good evening. Good evening. Um, so I can, can share, share my screen, screen and give a brief overview if you guys would like. like. Sure. Right, I think everyone can see my screen, screen now. now. Yep. Uh, so, so this is a two main street. street. Uh, it's uh, approximately 1.7 acres. Uh, there's an existing house in this area, existing garage, uh, and an existing barn here. Uh, a septic system for the house is in this location where my cursor is, and there is an existing wetland behind the septic system. Um, we are proposing to remove this barn and subdivide the property into two lots, keeping the existing house and the existing setup system as shown on this plan. Um, I believe the your town consultant, my land consultant, um, revised these three flags here. We have our surveyor going out there, he's going to locate those. Um, our proposed house is located in this location. Proposed septic is in this location. We are outside the wetland buffer. Um, we've done some additional stormwater testing as requested by the town engineer. We just finished it on Monday. Um, we are code compliant, zone compliant, without comparing variances. Um, that's a Okay, Dennis, are you okay with the, the, the changes in the demarcation of the uh, delineation of the uh, wetlands? Those are the issues that we had last time. You had those, your pink flags out there and, and right. those changes. Right, those have to be picked up without uh, the, 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 the change. So if I can jump in, the, the survey has not given us the new locations yet, but from what I understand, they are these three flags here, and then right. you come on, there are these three flags, so it will bump the buffer out, but it won't push it towards our development. It actually just, it's, it's, it'll increase the, the amount of the existing house in the bar. Right, just, um, it, eight is the only one that, you know, again, it, I, I don't think it's gonna bump out uh, that much, but, you know, I, I guess at these lot sizes, when you just drop a flag five feet back, 10 feet back, as long as, you know, you're comfortable, it doesn't end up uh, anything of consequence in the buffer. Certainly not going to reach the septic, it's not going to reach where you have some more. Okay. And I also commented on, you know, I, even even for during construction, um, you know, I, I think some trees are going to, you know, have to go by the wayside, so we just need information on that. The, sur the surveyor, when he's out there getting the, uh, the, these new relocated flags, he's going to be picking up the trees. Okay. Any trees that potentially could come down. So, will we need a tree application? I would say if it's potential, yes. So, yeah. it, it would be, it probably would be better for you to get that application in sooner than later so that we can move it all and include it in the public hearing. Okay. okay. So even if it's you're on the cusp, I think uh, take Dennis's advice and file the application. Yeah, because the code, you know, it, it defines removal as more than just Paul Bunyan. You know, it, it can affect critical root zones and you know, so some things that uh, could have like a longer um, you. sort of decline, you know, depending on what those impacts are. So that's why we just. You know, for construction, we, we, we try to know that we, we do our best if somebody doesn't want to remove them, then we do is to put some, you know, protection measures, you know, either fencing or, you know, trunk armor or whatever, whatever we need to do. So that's why it's just good to know where they are and, you know, how, how you, you plan on, you know, access, egress, ingress, and stockpiling and whatnot, you know, just that if it can be done, to, to protect those further, that's all. Okay, we can get that in. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Sabrina and Bob, uh, we, we read through your comments last time, um, but we, I guess it wasn't really official. So if you well, want I only had the one comment um, yep. about including the front, um, the width of the front hotline. That is my only comment. I think that this can be a little technical yep. Okay. 
Bob, uh, any comments? Anything still outstanding that you would like to see uh, done here? Other um, things that can be I'll just go over these real quickly. quickly. I don't think, I, think I, I read them last time, time but I'll go over them quickly. Basically, this is one of the comments that he won through SC had to do with technicalities and the report that had to be revised accordingly. Um, Ralph, when you said you did the deeps, uh, hopefully Terry or Miguel was out there. Yes, Terry, Terry was there. Very good. Uh, yeah, yeah, I won't bore everyone with the technical details, but they're all, all technical items that uh, have to be modified in the report. Nothing substantial, just to make all the bases covered. Uh, general comments, GC1 through GC11, basically, again, technical comments uh, with those. Uh, make certain when you're doing the stop and site distance, again, the site line triangle. And, I always recommend that we show the sight lines of vegetation moving you know, at least five to ten feet within that line to make it take into account the growth and vegetation that's there. Uh, there really will be retaining walls, two retaining walls, uh, about 75 linear feet to submit the structural plan. Ralph, you can do the structural design on that? Uh, depends on how they get. Um, right now, I'm guessing they're not that high. No, they're one to the four feet. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. I'll, I'll read it. Very good. And uh, just some general notes uh, regarding the walls, GC5. Um, make certain uh, you have a pavement replacement detail for it in the right way. Give you the town specs based on section 109 of the town code. That's GC6, GC7. Um, that's a note that uh, should be on the plan. Actually, the water department now has the final say on the type of size and piping that you put in and review the reports. And they uh, dictate the size. Uh, GC8 basically the profile to add more items to it. Obviously, you have to get a shield up any permit from other works. And um, you have still have to submit a subdivision map. I did not see one, uh, which hopefully incorporates all the wetlands and proper flagging that Dennis has talked about just recently. And provide copies of the old WTS that's the on site with the treatment system that's approved by the county as well. And those are my comments for tonight, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you, Bob. <clears throat> Any comments, questions from board members? Yeah, I have. Um, I just like clarification. I'm sorry, I don't. I didn't. Uh, this was in our packets a couple of weeks ago, and I, I didn't pick it up uh, to review it before to re-review it for tonight. One of the questions I had before that is probably in the material, um, the stone wall, that the existing stone walls that are on the property, um, the note, uh, there's a note here that says to be removed. Is that, uh, is that referring to the walls? Um, are you talking about this note here? I'm sorry, do that again. I can't see. Uh, you, yes. You this no, yes, those there, along the wall is what he's asking. There, that's yeah, a barn, yeah. and this is the wall, I think. Yeah. yeah the barn, the barn is going to be removed. This stone wall will be removed here. here. I, I think, think this, this this to be removed is is referring to the the, the driveway or path. Um, I, it's, it's not really going to be removed, it'll just be left to become overgrown. Um, so, it's, it, it's within the buffer, so. Okay, and then there's a note on another smaller stone wall, which is below that. It says to be removed. Will that one be removed? Right here. Yes, yes that one was planned to be removed. Okay. Um, How old are these uh, these stone walls? You know, I, I, I assume, assume they're old. I don't know. Yeah, because at the top of the property, there is what looks to be a foundation for what used to be a house or some sort of utility building, which uh, it looks like it's a foundation. That square? That, up in there. No, to oh, the right. There. Yeah, right up in there. Yes. It's, it looks like it's part of a, you know, like a historic, uh, I don't know how far back in history it goes. It uh, uh, sounds like you don't either, but, you know, I'm guessing that that's part of some previous history of the site. It might also be um, linked to the stone walls that are on the property. But you're not planning to remove that foundation either, are you? No, no, no we're, we're not, not going to remove that foundation. foundation. 
We don't, we're, we're not proposing to do anything, anything within the buffer, the weather buffer. buffer. No construction, but what about clearing and, and uh, any clearing that you'll be doing there? We don't plan on it, no. Can't do it without, without a wetland application if it's within the buffer. Right, and, and it's interesting to just refer back uh, to comments regarding meadow. That is like a mixed wet meadow community. There's really not much in the way of, of woody, woody growth, so, you know. That's why I had to put pin flags in. There was nothing for me to tie flag and tape to. <laughs> right. Okay, got it. Well, I, because I was beginning to want to think about you know a clearing and grading limit line for the property, but it looks as though the uh, the buffer is so extensive on the property, and there's um, and there won't, won't be any activity in there because it's already, it's a regulated buffer that maybe we don't need a clearing and grading limit line on the property. That that buffer line would suffice. For our purposes, it could. We generally put, 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 put a note on the subdivision map that says obviously, obviously any clearing in the wetlands we need planning board approval. So that's so always put it, and that would be built in clearing rating automatically because it's a wetland buffer. And I guess the only other issue is that you might have uh, a clearing grading limit line just for the construction itself. I guess sometimes we do that as well just to make sure that the construction is retained uh, within a certain area. But I, I, that's, uh, that's, I think the building department does that. I don't yeah, think we, we have control limits, limits of disturbance. Right. Okay. Any other thoughts? Okay. Is there a motion to move this forward to a public hearing? Uh, I guess it would be sometime in January. So moved. Okay. Um, no, let me just get. So we have not approved this yet. Oh. But we can anticipate that approval. We can anticipate that it would be. Going to shut down. January second. With a December eleventh deadline. Um, for submission. Okay. Did you hear that, uh, Ralph? The the uh, yeah, January second meeting, um, December eleventh deadline. Yeah. Yes. Or if that is, if you're still celebrating from the New Year's, if we want to go two weeks after that, you can do that too. Uh, I hope <laughs> Okay. So is the the motion that is to schedule a public hearing for January second? Somebody has to make it. Yep. Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so we'll see you then. Okay. Right. Okay, we have the next one is uh, Piccolino, uh, 15 Little Pine Road, application for a site development plan approval uh, for relocation of clearing and grading limit line and to construct an in-ground uh, swimming pool. So again, we, we looked at this a little informally last time. Uh, we gave you some comments. And um, uh, here we are. And we couldn't schedule a public hearing because we couldn't vote. Otherwise, we would, this would be a public hearing. So um, any questions, comments uh, for Ralph on, on what we've seen before and talked about last time? Uh, Sabrina and Bob, do you want to just run through a couple, any, any kind of highlights that uh, you just want to emphasize or... or if not, um, we're set. Last time I had mentioned, mentioned that it was a type, type two action in accordance with the speaker, that the, um, the change in the clearing and grading limit line, um, I, I don't believe should require any mitigation because if you look at the history on the property with the existing stone wall barricade, that barricade has been there since prior to the subdivision. Um, and pre-existed um, any type of coverage or subdivision regulations that when the planning board was initially setting the clearing and grading limit line, it is as if there was no field work conducted and at the time aerials were not as advanced as they are now. So we couldn't really depict a great placement for that line, but this line should never have been placed where it is because the majority of that property is in conservation right now. Right. Um, other than that, I have no objections to any public hearing on this. Okay, great. It's completely zoning compliant. Great, thank you. 
Bob, any questions, comments, issues? Those are just the biggest items that evidently they put in a terrorist. Uh, so we had Ool to the terrorists, unfortunately, between 2007 and 2021, based on GIS. Uh, they have to provide and uh, prepare a SWIFT. Uh, proposed stormwater construction in the uh, 3150 square feet. That's for chapter 108. And they have to uh, submit a stormwater management erosion application to the uh, 250. Those are the uh, biggest comments I have on the uh, application, Mr. Chairman. Okay. And I have no problem with these going into the uh, resolution as well to spring this morning. Great. Dennis? Okay. All set on that. <coughs> um, comments, board members? If not, is there a motion to schedule this for a public hearing? Same night, Ralph, January 2nd? Yes. Okay. Motion. motion then for January 2nd? Motion. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Very good. We'll see you then. All right. Thank you. You all have a good Thanksgiving. Thank you. Same to you. Uh, we move now to uh, Jagger Realty, 238 Sawmill River Road. This is an application for a site development plan approval for installation of Tesla electric vehicle charging stations. Hi. Good evening. I'm Henry Misas, the site manager of Tesla. We have Dave Rivet, our engineer, on the line. We have Dan, Dan Simon, our project uh, acquisition specialist. So, yeah, so this is a proposal for a charging station with 12 stalls. At the Smeccarelli Driving Center, um, we provided a site plan. We have some comments from, from the staff. We can get to those, but if you would like, I can give a quick overview of how these stations work. Well, we have no idea work, but maybe just a quick overview of what you're doing and where you're putting, how many you're putting in, and, and that sort of thing. Do we want to pull up the site plans we have? Dave, maybe you can share screen. Okay, you already set up. All right, so we yep, have. Great, thank you. So let me walk through the project from left to right on this site plan. The uh, power source is on the left hand side where the tra an existing transformer is. It's a Con Ed transformer. We've discussed with Con Ed, they can give us power. We're going to tap that existing transformer and run underground conduits as shown as Dave is showing in the parking lot around an existing uh, storm water facility that's underground. So we're going to round it into uh, an existing lawn where we're going to put another Connet transformer and then we're going to have our switch gear and uh, charging cabinets uh, right next to it in a pad. Then from there, we run more conduits. So these are for the actual charging stations. Uh, through the parking lot is shown into um, where the charging stalls are. And in that area, there's a curb and there's some trees. And we're avoiding excavation in the uh, where the trees are. And what we're going to do is we're going to remove the existing curb. And we're going to set a new curb or pour a new curb and set the charging stations over the new curb so that we're not touching the trees. That whole thing goes uh, in that row that you can see on the bottom and then it goes, it wraps around into the next four-ish stalls. We're actually having, we're installing a, we're creating an ADA accessible charging stall and that's why we have all these striped hatch doors on the left. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so that's 12, 12 charging stalls. Um, I think the main things that I want to highlight were we made sure not to touch existing trees. We had a conversation. Um, Is that as a pointer if you need? Oh, I think I'm good. Okay. Yeah. I, I do my, <laughs> my pointing, but um, if it's needed, I'm happy to. So yeah, so we're not removing any trees. I think that's, that's one big thing. Um, we are reducing the number of parking spaces. So that's, that's a big, big thing, big item of discussion here. Um, what's happening is that the existing parking spaces are eight foot wide. So that's, that's just too narrow for our use. You know, people backing in and out, getting around the car to plug the, the car. So we want them to be nine feet. So that's why all those spaces are becoming nine feet in our proposal. And that's why we have a reduction in parking. That plus the ADA 
uh, space that has you know, accessible clear space around it. So that's why we're reducing from, well, I guess we're taking up 15 spaces. So it's a reduction of three spaces to get to 12 charging stalls. Um, besides that, we, you know, it's pretty, you know, I, I don't know if there's much more to add. We're not putting lighting. We're just using the, the existing lighting. Um, we can go through the engineer comments and the planner comments. There are some things to note there, but is there any question? Well, I presume that these will be available 24-7? They will be 24-7. Okay. There's no attendance. People can come in and out, plug their own car. Um, is there lighting uh, that you're proposing uh, for safety or otherwise in, the, in this area? We are not proposing lighting. There is existing lighting in the parking lot, which is on uh, throughout the night. It is, okay. Yeah. <coughs> Um, yeah, I mean, the, the operation, everything has safety checks, you know, people just, again, plug in their car, plug it out. This does work, this will work with um, other electric cars besides Teslas. Um, not, today I cannot say all of them, right. but a significant number. Ford, Mercedes, uh, mm -hmm. it's a big, big list that will be able to use this charging station. So Ford will be able to? Yes, without an adapter. Interesting. I don't want to get too much into it, but they're adopting the Tesla plug, which became right. uh, North American heard. standard, open standard. Okay. Sabrina, you had some uh, comments? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I do. do. It's, it's a type 2 action in accordance with the state quality review act, so there's no further environmental review required. Um, the applicant is cover memo notes that 15 existing spaces will utilize and converted into 12 charging stations. Um, the total stall schedule on Plan C3 indicates that 13 spaces will be converted, so that needs to be clarified. Um, information has been provided um, on sheet Z1. They're, they're, the application is not applicable to the residential uses on the second lot. Um, the, the location of the, of the parking spaces uh, are on the commercial side of this property. Uh, the residential property was approved with 14 par parking spaces where nine were required. Um, it, I, I suggest that that table be removed because your your project is not affecting those parking spaces. Um, parking uh, that was approved by the planning board when you originally approved the commercial use on the site for retail use was for 86 parking spaces where 85 were required. So at that time, there was one more than was required. Today, this retail site has 85 spaces, and I can't remember why, but I do remember the applicant coming back to you to reduce the number of parking spaces on the site at some point in the most recent history. Um, the existing conditions map that was provided with the application package should be expanded to show the entire parking lot and stone mill ready to be on the plan so we can understand clearly how the parking is going to be affected. Um, one of the things that we discussed in the pre-application meeting was that the, um, the electric charging spaces would be able to be parked in by non-electric vehicles. Um, I do not know of anybody who would park in an EV charging space if they did not have an EV vehicle. Um, so I think that there should be signage um, in regards to utilizing these spaces and not moving the credit for parking spaces, um, or the applicant should do a parking demand study to show that the spaces are not needed. Because we're reducing um, from going from 85 spaces to 83 spaces, and some of those spaces um, that we occupied by the 13 occupied by the electric vehicle charging stations are not going to be open to everybody. Okay, sure address them one by one, or. Um. Well, what we normally do is you, you do that with an exhibition, but if, if you have any questions or comments in terms of... Sure. Sure. Um, 
So, well, I guess I'll start with the general parking. So we can add a sign that says for every stall, general parking or whatever is recommended by the board or the staff. Right. In a situation like this, what we've done is a sign that says general parking. That has satisfied many boards before. Mm -hmm. We could certainly do that here. Okay. Um, I think Sabrina's point is a good point because most people, when you see a charging station, it's like a handicap spot. You don't go there yeah. unless you have an EV. You you would like that to be the case, but people still use them. But we're happy to put a, a sign. Okay. Um, you know, as as we discussed, this is we would like to avoid this this traffic study just to not extend the project. Um, but we're we're comfortable with that. Um, I'm sorry, I, I forgot all the other items. But Dave, if, if there, there were some that were typos, and I don't yeah. know, Dave, if you want to go through them, but no, no, those, those we those, can address those yes, in the yeah, next revision. Exactly. That's not exactly. Yeah. And if you're going to do a sign, um, I appreciate that. If you can just provide some specifications on the sign in your next submission, that would be helpful. Yep. Should we propose the sign, or is this something that you know, Sabrina, you, or anybody from the board would like to tell us what? You would like to see the sign? I don't think we've tackled EV signs like this, or multi-use signs yet. So <laughs> it's a matter of first impression. Does the wording general parking seem I think we need to specifically say parking for all vehicles or, or non-electric vehicles. Something that, that opens it up beyond general parking or EV parking. Okay, well, I guess we'll work on the wording. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're, yeah, we can accommodate that. Yeah, super. Uh, Bob, you had some comments? Oh, uh, yes, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. Um, yes, there were two attachments I had sent with my memo, which are two critical maps, which I think you guys should look at because there may be some conflicts and interferences with the trenching for the electrical line, with the transformer, uh, the bollards, and the footings, because the plans I had sent you shows locations of existing infiltrators, which I highlighted in blue. So, you know, it seems to me, based on what I can see, there's definitely conflicts with those being placed over those, and obviously they cannot. Um, not only that, to the east of the project, where the retention basin is, you have bollards, and you really don't show in detail on the footings, and that's right over another infiltrator, which I showed in blue. So you really might want to drill this on your plan, guys, and make certain that there's no interference with this. And I would, I would recommend that you use some deep test holes to make certain when you build it, you're not on top of these infiltrators, because that would be very problematic. And secondly, too, you might want to do some deep tests on the actual locations of the uh, underground manholes and also the uh, on-site wastewater treatment systems, because you might have problems with that. Uh, as well, so um, I would definitely put that on the plan and make sure there's nothing to pass on that prior to construction. Uh, that would be problematic when your contractor starts. So we really my comments, comments one and two. Bob, Bob, could we talk um, about this one before we go into the next one? And that way we can. Uh, sure, if you have questions on what Bob said, sure. We can uh, just go one by one. So, yes, we appreciate those plans. We did not have them before. When we looked at them, it, it was concerning because they show the infiltrators exactly where we're going to show or put our equipment. However, if you go to the survey that you also provided, that does show the one of the infiltrators further north, which is away from where we plan to put our equipment. And based on uh, what's on the site, you can visibly see the manholes to access the infiltrator. So the survey was accurate, not that site plan, at least as far as, yes, that's the survey. Um, so I, I think we're good on one end, um, although I, I uh, concur that we should do some test pits. We will do that. We wanted to have this, this meeting at least to get a, you know, like a, an indication of if this plan works or not before we go out and do the test pits. But we will do that. Um, well, also, also too, there's, there's some infiltrators on the east side, right, right to the right by the detention basin. So uh, you might want to be careful about that. It's so okay, so that's let me, let me draw, keep that, that up. Let me show it up. Let me uh, annotate. Um, let it out. Right here. It's shown on one of the plans. So you might want to see that's in. 
Yeah, that yeah. one. Yeah. yeah, that one. I did not see any evidence of that one on site. There's no cleanouts or manholes. I, I'm suspecting that's not there. However, we will do a test bit to verify that. Okay. And then we'll do the two big arrows right here. And right here. Yeah, I'll definitely do it. So with your, if it's worth your uh, while to do that before the contract gets out there. Agreed. And then you get a, you get a big problem. So. Yeah, yeah, just to, yeah, I mean, I'm just, just to confirm, confirm or kind of confirm, confirm it. Sorry. I mean, that's but, but, um, our, our, our survey that, that was done in the field kind of matches what, um, what that survey that we were just looking at. So, so we, our area here, we're both here, but should be, should be clear. But again, like Henry said, it would be tested and confirmed. Okay, so now those are my two comments, one and two, and then and three, basically, uh, so show the standard details, crime section details, width, height, depth of conduit material, compaction, limits, pavement, restoration. Uh, number five, basically, the charge post and concrete foundations, how deep they're going. That's going to be required for the BP as well, and then six provides time schedule, uh, which includes following A through F. You might want to include the signs that Spring is looking for. On that schedule, so everyone knows exactly where they are, the place, and the location, and the footing. Uh, one thing I did note um, um, where you show an elevation, my comment number three, you show an elevation of, I think, uh, which is like seven and a half feet higher than what's there. Is that a typo? I, I think there was some, some minor, minor confusion. Um, I, I, I believe it's in regards, in regards to this kind of here. So this, this was just the, the square footage, footage, the area that we're um, kind, kind of impacting, impacting with our equipment. And, and it, it, I believe what you were saying, saying that we were raising it up in elevation. Oh, you're right. Because it was so close. But yeah, it was just, just, it was just I think, a confusion. Um, this is just the square footage of what we're, we're impacting. Okay. It, it would be, be at, at, at basically the same level as it, as it is now. Okay, thank you for the clarification. That's my bad. No, no problem. Okay, that's all. Uh, that's uh, my comments, Mr. Chairman. Bob, I had a question uh, for you. Um, this is going down memory lane. But where you drew in here, where we have uh, those uh, you know, spaces that are going to be used for the charging, my recollection was... Beneath that is the sewage uh, disposal area, and that it was actually built up. It's it's almost like a bridge or cantilevered out uh, over these the, the, these retention areas. Uh, so I don't recall exactly, but it seems to me that's that's it was a very uh, unusual situation that we had, and I think that's what was approved. So the question I have is, uh, I think it's just one just to confirm with engineering if that is the case. Um, EVs are heavier than regular cars. We just got to make sure that the engineering of whatever was built there is sufficient to uh, take the, the additional weight of uh, 12 additional EVs in that area. So, are, um, you, speak, are, are you, you speaking, speaking of, of the galleys that were put in for the outside wastewater treatment system? system? Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's up here. They outlined it. Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. It's up there. There's nothing in here. You know, no, that's, that's where all the galleys are, yes. Okay. Okay. I don't think yeah, they're all concrete galleys are stacked. Uh, you, you have, have the asphalt on those, right? right? Uh, I, I believe, believe and you make sure that it is clear. They are pretty sturdy. Okay. Mr. Chairman, they're all concrete. I'm sure all the concrete is probably good. Probably, yeah. But just mm -hmm. to be sure, uh, we are talking about extra weight, and, and we've had some, I guess, situations in, in the city <laughs> that might be traceable to the extra weight of EVs. Uh, parking garages, et cetera, so let's make sure that we don't have a problem. And I, and I would suggest that we, uh, just as a courtesy, refer this to the Millwood Fire Department just for their, their thoughts and uh, uh, issues that they might have. I, I don't think there should be any, but uh, they're the experts in, in terms of, uh, I think, charging stations and electric uh, voltage like this. Makes sense. As part of, so the referral will be as part of the site plan approval or as part of the building permit? Uh, probably we do it earlier, be site plan. Yeah, how, they're how, fast. Would that, how would that work? Would, would you guys handle that or is that something that... We, we would just send a note and ask them to, uh, to look at the plans and go out and, and meet with you perhaps, consult with you. But we would expect that we would see probably a, you know, a couple of paragraph letter just saying it's okay and we're all set. Okay, sounds good. So I have a question about um, how these things um, 
it'll work in terms of customer customer demand and time of use and and so on. It is it do these. Uh, it's anticipated that you're going to be putting in a total of 12, is that right? 12. That this would be, and we're taking away three spaces in order to put in the, the 12. Mm -hmm. So is this, should this be considered as an added demand, parking demand, because it's a use that goes beyond the use of the property, which has its parking ratio um, in place with respect to the stores that are there? Uh, is this going to draw more cars be, um, beyond the demand that the stores might require and therefore end up being a problem because there aren't enough spaces for the existing purpose? Do you have any any data on how this would work? It's a good question. I, I wish I could give you a formula for this, but I can only speak from experience. We do these at you know, like the best example I can think of is Wawa's, like just convenience stores. We just take up their parking, um, and, and these are busy stores. And we don't have problems with that, you know, like creating more demand than the stores can take. Just, just using existing parking. I, I would view it as people that come here to charge to this specific shopping center are going to be patrons of the, char of the shopping center. So... From our point of view, these are people that would come in to, to shop, and at the same time, they're, they're charging. So what's interesting to me is that um, that would depend on the nature of the shopping trip, because some of these trips are, you know, I'm going to go pick up a pizza, or you know, I'm going to pick up my dry cleaner. That's what I think there's dry cleaners here. There used to be dry cleaners here. Um, that's the nature of the shopping trip, which is just in and out. And so unless there is a really, really, really fast charger, these folks are probably not going to take the time to, to hook up their car in order to get a quick charge for that short of a stay in the shopping center. So um, I guess I'm wondering, in when you guys sort of look at where to put these, putting 12 back here in this shopping center, um, is that going to be pretty much the standard ratio? Are there 12 for essentially 80, 80, 80 spaces, something like that? So is that the ratio in every commercial parking lot that you're looking at? And why here in this particular place at this particular time? So as far as the charging session itself, it does vary. Um, on average, 25 minutes. It's not hours. Um, it could be shorter, it could be longer, depending on the car, the state of charge, many other things, but around 25 minutes. As far as the ratio, this also varies. You know, I, I think this shopping center with 85 spaces is, you know, it has a lot of spaces compared to the 12 that we're proposing, just, just based on experience, I guess. But it, we don't have a ratio, per se. Um, can the shopping center support this is really, I think, what you're trying to, to get to. Um, I think, again, based on the fact that people are going to come in and be patrons of the shopping center um, you know, and get out in 20 to 25 minutes on average, you know, I, I don't think it's going to be a problem. Uh, well, there, there are um, two potential 25-minute um, stays there. One might be to actually have your pizza while you're there or the restaurant, uh, Spaccarelli's. Otherwise, I don't think that there's a 25-minute stay, unless I'm mistaken from what I remember from the shopping center. So, I I mean, I'm not, I'm, I guess I'm not suggesting that, not yet suggesting that we have a parking demand problem here. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't see somebody driving to this site and not doing business here, but just, mm -hmm. or maybe I'm wrong, not wanting to do business here, but putting their car here in order to get a charge, only to get a charge and not shop here. Do you have that happen at other locations? I'm pretty sure there's gonna be people that plug, watch a movie in the car, or just not get out of the car, but most people will go and, you know, based on like at least the way that I charge when I use my electric car, I will get out and buy a pizza or do something, you know. Did you, was there something in your write-up uh, that, that mentioned the proximity of this to the Taconic? And that you thought maybe traffic would come in off of the the Taconic and Charge? Yeah, as far as... point, I saw that would be something over and above what we would normally see just for the stores. I guess this is addressing why this specific location. Right. You got Route 100, you have the Taconic, which are main thoroughfares. 
I would say, yeah, there's going to be, I mean, a big, a big chunk of the people using this station are going to be people that are traveling in the Taconic. Mm -hmm. um, so, so yeah, it, to an extent, yeah, we will draw traffic. I mean, so is there a way, I mean, there's some sort of um, something on your GPS or something when you have your EV that tells you that there's a location, you know, within the next 15 miles or whatever, and it kind of beeps? Yeah, to, to explain it really fast, the car itself will, will tell you where you should charge based on your trip. You can always decline it or whatever, but the car will navigate you. It will, not only on how much battery you have left, but also on how busy a station is, which yeah. is really key. If the mm -hmm. station is full, it'll navigate you to another station that's less full, which helps with the congestion problem. But you have a problem here because you're inviting parking for non-EVs, and the system will not know if those spots are taken. That's that's correct. Um, and I think that the... Like, I totally support the concept, but I think you're trying to play it both ways here, and it's a little bit perhaps disingenuous, the idea that I think Tom's questions are, are spot on, as usual. <laughs> and um, either you think that there's enough parking here to support 12 EV charging stations, and it's a non-issue, or you think you're going to be drawing people from outside to the space. I, you know, the, the, to me, the tell is that you're, I, I don't understand why you're allowing non, I mean, the reason you're installing this is to make money, which is totally fine. But if you allow non-EVs to park here, you don't get the money, right? The parking otherwise is free, right? And so I don't understand why you're allowing non-EVs to park here. That seems actually unusual. Wait, is there even a fee? There's no fee. Yeah, there's no, <coughs> there's no fee to charge? No. The, the charging mechanism doesn't. The, 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 the kilowatt in. hours are charged, but we're not charging for the, for the use of the space. Yeah. Sure, but who, who, who pays for the kilowatt hours? The, the customer. Right, so there's a, charge to, to, there's, a, there's a charge to charge. Yeah. Right. But if you park there without an EV, you don't pay for the space. Correct. So why are you allowing non-EVs to park in these spaces? Well, I think that was coming from us, frankly, because we were saying if you don't do that, then you're going to lose those spaces, and now well, you've know. materially changed the parking ratio. Sure, which speaks to Tom's questions that there's going to be an issue with parking. Yes. And so the question is, is there or is there not an issue with, with parking here? Again, we, from our experience doing Wawa's, which I think is just a good example of busy parking lots where we have to allow non-Teslas to park at these spaces, just based on the conditions of our agreements. The, you know, we do it, it's, it happens where other cars, non-Teslas will park there, but then they leave and then, uh, and then somebody can use the space. So we, we're okay with this, with allowing other cars to use the spaces. We, we would prefer to just keep them dedicated for charging. That's for sure, but we're okay with, with this. Does the software in, in because I don't own an EV, do, does the software in um, in other your competitor uh, manufacturers do they also have the software which directs them to directs a, a driver to a Tesla charging station? Yeah, that's that's a tough one because the for right now. Sorry, can he answer the question? What? It's 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 something that has been very brand new where other. EVs can use our charging stations, so this is this is a work in progress. I, I I don't think at this point the other manufacturers have that software, but I would assume that that's something that's going to would have to come from you in. because you control this. The uh, well, maybe it doesn't. The location uh, could be known by anybody, but yes. the the occupation of the spaces would have to come from your software because you're the ones who are who are monitoring the, the, the use of the, so yeah. I guess I would, I don't know where to go with this, but I'd feel a little bit more comfortable. I live over in Millwood and the Millwood parking lot for the, um, for the grocery store and drug mart and that parking lot gets to be really, really full, especially on Fridays and Saturdays. And this time of year, it's just nuts because everybody's shopping for the holiday. I mean, it, it's packed. 
and that's just for the, the stores that are there. And I guess I would be more comfortable if we understood the utilization of this lot. Mm -hmm. And I guess I don't know, it'd be good to know what the existing parking ratio is with the amount of retail that's there and the number of spaces, because we have standards for these things. And maybe, you know, maybe the ratio provides you some relief in this, in this situation where you can say, well, okay, we can afford to, to sort of loosen spaces. I'm not suggesting that, that I, I'm not suggesting that it's going to happen that all of a sudden at the same time, 12 people are going to pull off the freeway and occupy all these spaces to, to charge their cars. And they won't be able to anyway because the space, some of them will be used uh, by other people, you know, who don't, don't have EVs. Mm -hmm. But it really would be good to know the relative impact of, you know, a logical use of this, real world use of this facility and the existing parking ratio that we have in order to decide whether this is the right way to do it. I mean, if this satisfies, if 12, if 12 spaces satisfy the demand, it might be better your demand that you anticipate. It might be better to put three in another location and four in another location and have what's, what's the net, you know, five or six here instead of 12 here to distribute the load rather than concentrate it in this one parking lot where these retailers are trying to do business. Mm -hmm. So I know it's a big thing to think about and to sort of try and figure out where the sweet spot is, but I think that's a question we ought to try and understand a little bit better with your help mm -hmm. and our help also. Well, I, you know, to me, it's, it's relatively straightforward. You know, I'm, like I said, conceptually, I support, you know, EV charging stations. I own and drive an EV, not a Tesla, obviously, for obvious reasons. But, um, you know, we're being asked, I mean, the reason this is before us, which is the question I always ask, is because we're being asked to approve a parking reduction. In order to approve a parking reduction, and again, I'm all for reducing parking if it doesn't cause a problem, right? And the only way for us to be able to determine that is to understand the need, the demand for parking. And Tom, your point is such a good one. It's not just a reduction of three spaces, because it's not like for like. It's not a one for one. It's a reduction of three spaces and the inclusion of 12 spaces that may increase the demand. I, I don't know. If, I mean, the idea is that it will increase the demand. That's that's their hope, yes. which is totally fine. But it's that's a question before us. And I, I mean... Uh, yeah, and I think Sabrina raised this before also. I think what we're... Even, even your response that we'll just put a sign up is really... They're taking the you know the the short route on this to you know avoid having to you know figure out what's really going on with the parking and maybe we really need to really figure that out because it might actually to Tom's point and you're to your benefit and that is you know what those twelve spaces can be dedicated we have enough space here and that really that'll work and it works better for you it works better for the uh, the development it might not I don't know but uh, maybe we really uh, should uh, uh, look at that and see and see what. Uh, what happens here? <coughs> one way to, <coughs> excuse me, one way to, to maybe address it is actually to phase it. And uh, once you put in the, um, the, the basic infrastructure, not to charge the stations, mm -hmm. but the basic infrastructure on the property, um, you have that with the capacity, put it in for the capacity of 12 spaces and then just put in uh, three or four in the beginning to see incrementally whether that's going to cause a problem over time. I, I'm probably not happy to hear that. I have done that before at Wal uh, town of Wallkill. I'm sorry? The town of Wallkill. And how did that go? We applied for eight. That's what that's sort of the lower limit of what we do. Um, planning board said, we don't think you really need eight, do four. Within a couple of years, we're back and did the, the eight. 100% will tell you if we do half, let's say six, we'll come back and ask you for permission to do 12. Oh, I expect you to. But that, I mean, I would do that too if I were you. But I'd come so, back and ask for eight, but... No, what I was saying is we need the 12. Well, you need the 12. I understand that. But, but this isn't just about you. You know, it's about the other people who, the retailers here and the customers and the people who are used to shopping, the people in the community who are used mm -hmm. to shopping here and not necessarily going to be happy of having people come off the driveway on their way, from, like, off the freeway on their way from... I don't know where to, I don't know where, to take up their parking space to charge their, to charge their car. And I think, that's, I think that's our issue to deal with. So if you've done a phased sort of a, you know, improvements before, maybe that's something we ought to consider as a test 
for this property. Again, I, I think I think the the concept of starting with half, let's say, and then coming back, we will come back. I, of course, I can one hundred percent tell you that. But I would love to take tackle the second part of this, which is the property, how much parking there is right now, and yep. we agreed to use signs because that was offered by Sabrina. If if what we really need is a study, we'll do a study. And we've ha we've had it where we do the study and then there's excess parking. So we would hope that's the case. But if we just want to understand what if what's what's needed to satisfy this concern or what to how to address this concern. So it's a study counting the cars uh, at a certain time, a certain period. Is that what, what we're looking for here? Well, we ought to, I, think, I, I guess so. I mean, that sounds smart to me. I think we ought to ask Sabrina if we have any data on that. Um, what is the current parking ratio? Apparently, we've already reduced it along the way uh, by a number of spaces. I don't know. I don't know what the actual um, use of this we don't lot have, is. We do not have any use to share on that one. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I guess, you know, I guess that's, I guess to me that makes sense to sort of figure this out. Um, as to see how big a window, you know, we may have in order to welcome you in to do this. Uh, the other thing I'd suggest to you is that maybe I'm wrong about this, but, but Tesla, not you in particular, but Tesla is in the business of putting these all over the country. And I'm guessing that somewhere in Tesla, there have to be utilization studies and demographics and all of those things, I'm guessing, to to be in a position, a corporate position, to actually promote and invest in this kind of a thing. So I wonder if there's some internal information you can get from, maybe not Mr. Musk in person, but somewhere in the organization, <laughs> what the, uh, you know, what those, those statistics might be to help us understand what's happening here. I, I, I agree, agree with you, Tom. Tom. I, I think, think there's a, a couple, couple of things going, going on. Uh, like, like you said, said these uh, Tesla, Tesla people, people are trying to get this uh, put in a lot of places, and uh, it, it's not as clear as it was a year or two ago as to how many um, EV units will be needed because people aren't really ready to spend the, <clears throat> the money to buy that kind of car. Now, on the other side, the rate at which um, the charging uh, can occur over will not diminish, is my, from what I can read, but it will last over three or four or five years. So, some of this sounds like it's premature, but uh, I would suggest that if you want to build the whole thing, <coughs> Use what Tom suggested. You know, what is the what is it going to look like in the future, uh, or and what has it looked like over the last I don't know two years, and see if okay you want twelve stalls, but maybe you only want to occupy you know, bring bring the force you know, half of that the first year. The second year might be more if the charger uh, can, can speed up without blowing it. Yeah, I think it's maybe good to recognize, and maybe I'm wrong about this, but that we're not talking just about Teslas and the number of Teslas cars that are on the road who would be trying to access or, or wanting to access this property. If it's, it's probably most people uh, who have EVs will have the capacity through an adapter or whatever device to be able to use your charging stations, and I think that that's the public good. But so we're not talking about just the Teslas driving down the road. We're talking about the new Mustangs driving down. By the way, those are really cool cars. Mm -hmm. The new yes. Mustangs driving yes. down the road. Um, you know, the, uh, I'm shopping for it. My wife is shopping for an EV. <laughs> so I'm familiar with the brands out there, and they're really pretty exciting. And there are going to be a lot of them on the road. And I'm concerned that it's almost like an attractive nuisance, if you know what I mean, that all of a sudden mm -hmm. we have more cars than we're maybe predicting today are going to be wanting to access this for uh, for their own purpose, not shopping purposes, but charging purposes. 
So I'm going to make the argument that this is going to be a required infrastructure at some point. And what, what we are asking is, let's find how our town is not going to have a negative, negative impact in this particular location. And I think the best way around it is if you're open to the trucking study, that's the simplest way for us to solve the problem today. We just get what's the required, what do we have today, how much excess room you have, that, you know, if, whether you have four now or eight now or 12 now, you, have, you at least know what that room looks like. This is going to become required infrastructure. And, you know, these are conversations you're probably seeing village after village, town after town, and there is going to be resistance. At some point, it's going to be like a gas station. And that's why the WAVA, right, that we're going to need to go and get our cars recharged. And so I think right now it's going to help us if you do this parking study and it just clears the road for you and for us. Well, I think it helps. So we talked about the tough things, but we <coughs> got into the really tough stuff. Dennis has his comments too. He's trees. All about the trees, exactly. I'm not going to be in the industry, I'm just the Lorax, so here we go. <laughs> I mean, I just think we will agree to the traffic yeah. study. Let's okay. do it. Let's get that out of the way. Yeah. Okay. And work with work with our town staff to, to yeah. help you frame to, that. To define perfect. Yeah. 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 I've done traffic studies before. It would be great if we can direction them. Yeah. yeah. We, well, otherwise, we're, we're just we're just all hand waving. Hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you, Kelly. Um, so just from reviewing the plans, the first two comments. Uh, there was a note the contractor coordinate final planting design with owner and Tesla PM prior to construction. I didn't see a quote unquote planting plan, so I didn't know if that was an error or not. Um, you know, just in consideration, <coughs> I, I understand there's a generic um, mentioning when it talks about, you know, reseeding and, you know, the contractors just to seed and straw disturbed areas. We, you know, I like to see just, you know, what, what those candidate. Uh, mixes would be, um, you know, just to really for verification that, you know, it's something that would work, you know, something that's not, you know, inconsistent with, with the area, etc. Um, and also with, I guess, regards to the remainder of Note 6, so this is when we get that to the trees, so I think when you were first met with us, and, and I didn't know at the time specifically this existed, but I had a feeling that, you know, the trees you know, obviously upon first appearance, you just go into, you know, a, a paved area and then on the perimeter, you know, you see like what, what, what's landscaped. But knowing that this, you know, living in the area, knowing what that used to look like and that obviously it became expanded as a shopping center probably had a resolution associated with it and it certainly did. And so those trees really represent replacement plantings for the approval of uh, the, the shopping center. Um, the particular species that's planted there is just one that looks like it's these calorie graph pears, which were listed on the uh, landscape plan that I found that is associated with the resolution from 1998. Um, they're, they're a hardy tree. Uh, that's kind of what my uh, summary uh, was. I mean, they're popular uh, street trees. Um, you know, they seem to uh, do well in terms of not being susceptible to disease. Uh, there are some that I've seen, you know, when they get bigger, have suffered some damage, uh, you know, just like from wind or limb loss, but it doesn't necessarily kill, kill the specimen. It's just, you know, sort of like a, a landscape uh, appearance. Um, so I, I kind of wanted to specify that with respect to these particular trees, because I know, going to the uh, subsequent paragraph, that, you know, I, I think these trees should be, you know, accounted for in some way and, 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 and monitored, even if they're not going to be removed, just because obviously there's going to be work nearby. Um, and, you know, sometimes, as I was uh, sort of mentioning before, uh, they could, you know, over time, uh, or not until and over a period of time, sort of show uh, consequences, uh, uh, suffering damages, etc., cetera, from, from work after it's... Um, you know, long been completed. And I know the planning board typically, um, you know, usually attaches that, that five-year minimum. But again, in consideration of the species, I felt like a, a two-year minimum uh, would be adequate, you know, sort of as a monitoring of these trees after the completion of the project, just to make sure that none of them have uh, you know, suffered any uh, consequences. 
Um, if that's to occur, then of course you're going to have to do uh, an assessment prior to construction, so you can determine what the baseline is, you know, for each of each of those trees. Uh, and I just recommend, obviously, somebody qualified, typically an arborist or you know RLA, uh, would complete that, um, you know, so we know what we're looking at. Um, I, I think where it gets difficult, and hopefully it doesn't come to this, is that you know if these trees need to replace to be replaced. They really shouldn't be replaced at a one-to-one -one ratio because they represent replaced trees or mitigated trees for something that probably was older, maybe than you know all of us in this room, uh, you know, and, and bigger. So that's why I was uh, recommending at a minimum that you would you know double uh, those replacement ratios almost as a as a two-to-one uh, any of the trees that um, you know suffered, and that would be based on you know the existing diameters of those trees that would come out obviously through that. Uh, baseline health assessment. Um, so if that occurs, then I would also recommend that obviously we need to do maintenance bonding for the cost of replacing uh, of those trees if indeed they uh, decline or die. And that basically is the context of my comments. Okay, great. So basically a two to one, almost like a backup planting plan in right. the event there's impacts to the, the existing replacement trees. Right, right, because like, you know, the, the, the concept of mitigation is you really should do it once and walk away. It's, right. You don't pick at the surgical wound, otherwise it never heals, you know, so, yes. Okay, good, okay. All right. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Thank you so much. That's it. So, you. Uh, again, me. get together with staff and um, work on those plans and uh, the deep hole test and all the things that you've heard of tonight, and then um, when you're ready, Contact us, and we'll get you back on the agenda and go from there. Sounds good. We'll come back when we're ready. Okay, very good. Thank Thanks you. so much. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Okay, our next item is a request for an extension of approval. This is the Westchester Pavers, 60 Millwood Road, LLC, 60 Millwood Road, New York Route 120, 133. Uh, application for a site development plan amendment for a change of use, tree removal permit, stormwater pollution prevention plan approval. Uh, we last heard back in February of 2019, um, so we have a request for an extension um, uh, from the applicant. Good evening, Chairman, members of the board. I'm Brian with Westchester Papers, and I come today to ask for an extension to complete the said site plan that we came here with before. Right. We've had some delays along the way. Um, there's been some activity between some neighbors and the current owner of the building that has delayed some transactional commitments, as well as I had a little bumps and rolls with COVID and construction. Um, we have recently uh, came back to town. We met with Bob Scioli. He gave me some guidelines of what he was okay with us doing and not coming here to talk about our plan to finish. And uh, as of today, most of what we have to do is just changing our septic in the back. Uh, removing some of the pavement for the land banking agreement that we had and finishing our planting plan. And that should be all of it. And light bulbs. Good. Any uh, problems with staff, uh, Bob, Sabrina, on the extension request? Okay. I'm, I'm good. 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 So am I. Great. Thank you. Any questions from, from board members? What, what's, the, excuse me, what's the time that's being requested? Six months. Is that sufficient? Yes. Well, great. Right. Right. Okay. As long as the health department doesn't uh, create a massive delay. But other than that, it should well, be good. That's a big good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So is there a motion to grant the extension uh, sought by the uh, applicant? Motion. Second? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Yeah, as, a, as a Millwood resident, I can't wait for that property to be Me too. active again. Me so too. Yeah. Soon enough. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Happy holidays, everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay, we have another request for an extension. This is the Chappaqua Central School District. This is an application for a preliminary subdivision flat, steep slope, steep slope permit, tree removal permit, stormwater pollution prevention plan approval, Button Hook Road, and Sabina. Uh, good, good evening, evening Mr. Chairman, Chairman and members of the planning board. Kristen Motel from Kennedy and Theater for the school district. Uh, we had submitted a request for an extension of time. Um, the request is, is until February. The litigation is still pending. Uh, the case is in discovery right now.
So, uh, you know, we had requested February if uh, six months seems more appropriate to accommodate the litigation, uh, you know, we, we would be okay with that too, um, to submit the final file application. I think it makes sense. I, I make February's pretty tight given the way the courts are going these days. Especially with the holidays. <laughs> yes. You know, February will be here before you blink. No. They'll be back in them. Yeah. It's it's like a race between the courts and the, and the county board of health. I mean, you know, I, I don't know who's slower these days. But, um, that makes sense to me. You know, with a six month extension. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is there a motion to grant a six month extension uh, to the applicant? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Thank you very much. Have a happy Thanksgiving. Thank you. You too. Thank you. Okay, we come to uh, minutes. Uh, we have the minutes of September 27. Um, uh, Tom, Dick, and I were here. I don't know if there's anyone else who's watched or whatever. I had a couple of minor things. I'll just show them, give them to you <laughs> rather than try to scan on that tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, anything, anything substantive? Not for me. Dick, anything substantive? Okay, nothing? Okay. Um, is there a motion to adopt the minutes of September 27 with the minor changes? Motion. Second? Please. All in favor? Aye. 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 So we have the minutes of October 17. Um, uh, yeah, I don't think so. Yeah. So, um, Again, any sub sub substantive changes or observations or whatever? If not, uh, is there a motion to adopt the minutes with whatever minor uh, Smith's changes that we might have? Do you have changes? No minor. Is there a motion to adopt them with those minor changes? Motion. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And then Aye. Brown? Finally, we come up with the uh, minutes from uh, November 8th. Uh, and can we do minutes or a minute meeting that we really didn't have? I just. You're I compulsive. Just you just these, had to do it. Well, I type these. We all, I can keep them in our minute books, but I put on the top minutes of an informal meeting yep. with a note that it we don't have a quorum. Yep. So I don't know if they're formal minutes. Technically, I mean, they should probably be. Put into the record because the application, the applicants did speak, okay. yep. and the board technically can vote on the minutes, notwithstanding the fact that they weren't here. <laughs> I love it. Okay. <laughs> so virtual you, minutes and a virtual meeting. <laughs> all of a sudden, feel empowered. Oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> For once, that's the way it should be. Where we just disappear after a meeting. <laughs> um, okay. Is there a motion to adopt whatever it was that John said we're adopting? <laughs> a motion. Second. Second. Oh, enthusiastic. Does anybody have changes on this one? How can I have changes? Where I wasn't here. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. And finally, we come uh, to our, uh, I mean, you know, the party planning situation here. The 2024 planning board schedule. Um, I think, I hope everyone saw it beforehand. We sent it out a couple weeks ago. So is there a motion to adopt the proposed schedule of uh, meetings for next year? Motion. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Uh, I think we're set. Is there a motion to close the meeting? Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 All set. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.